Tom here from Learn Systems, and I did a video about how to get started with XCPNG and building your virtual lab. This is kind of a continuation of how to build from sources. I referenced a video from 2018, but that showed Debian 9, Debian 10 is out. So let's show you how to build this on Debian 10 from source. And there's a couple different ways to do it. But first, if you'd like to learn more about me or my company, head over to lawrencesystems.com. If you'd like to hire a short project, there's a hire us button right at the top. If you want to support this channel other ways, there's affiliate links down below to get you deals and discounts on products and services we talk about on this channel, which does include links to our shirt and swag store, as well as a Patreon so you can become a Patreon supporter. And finally, if you'd like to have a more in-depth discussion about the video you're about to watch or suggestions for other videos, head over to forums.lawrencesystems.com and we can have a discussion in our free and open community forums. Thank you very much and let's get to the video. All right. This is the final version. We're actually going to roll it back and do an entire walkthrough and instructions. And as I like to mention, the walkthrough details will be posted over in the forums. Now, first, they have done a great job of documenting exactly how to pull all the code, all open source. And this is a full feature here and they even have how to do it on different platforms. And this is great. I have gone through their instructions and they do work. But let's make life a little easier for you. As a matter of fact, this was even... Uh, Re uh, updated three days ago. So this is an active project and there's been updates to it um, based on uh, changes that have been made and things like that. Now, the first thing I will comment on, suggested platform VM is a fresh install of any supported OS. You should put at least three gigs of RAM on the machine, but prefer preferably two to four. That's important. And I think that's where some of you may have failed. I believe my old video, I'm showing a smaller VM. Well, in two years, uh, more features and more compiling requires slightly bigger. So let's go back and start with how are we going to build this and how does all this work? And we're going to walk you through step by step. Now, first, this is an already working system that we're going to destroy. It's uh, working. It's attached to my lab server. You can see it here at 3.14. We're going to blow it away and start over and show you exactly how I got there. So let me close those windows. We're going to go ahead and stop this VM here. And I have a snapshot before I built it. So this is like the base install. So we're rolling this install back. So I'm going to go ahead and revert. Don't care about snapshotting before because we can build it again. We can make it better. Well, we're going to make it the same actually. All right. So go through your normal and I'll just run through this real quick here. Choose. And I chose uh, Debian. And then we chose the DVD for Debian. And I'm going to skip the details of this part, but you just got to get the Debian install uh, version 10 is what we're using here, actually, to show you exactly. So Debian 10.3 uh, AMD 64 ISO. I do recommend if you have a lot of processors available, assign them. I do recommend assigning four gigs of RAM. So that's how this particular virtual machine was built, is with four gigs of RAM. I did test it with less and it fails to build the install. I threw 16 processors at it, uh, 16 cores, I should say, not processors, but you get the idea, 16, at it because it when it compiles it does take some time the more cores you have it's going to lessen that and of course the faster the cores are that you're throwing at it it's going to go a lot faster so let's go ahead and boot this up and it's our clean install now when i when i see clean install when i went through the install for debian i just didn't feel like walking through it a second time i installed the ssh server and standard system utilities that's it it's as bare bones as we can go so we're going to walk through every step of the instructions once this boots up so boots up relatively quickly. I did load to the Zen tools in it. So um, the Zen tools are loaded and my SSH keys are in here. So a couple basics housekeeping, but you should be able to get that far before you try to compile source code. So Debian Linux 10, ready to log in. If I look at the network address, it's uh, 114. So let's SSH into it. All right, now I haven't even installed my fancy little prompt or anything like that. We can install it if we want. Not that worried about it for now, but we're going to run through and I do want to install one extra utility. So I'm going to apt install tmux and it's just so I can easily split the screen. It just looks nicer so I can show you when the compile part comes. All right. This is, that's a completely optional apt get install. Uh, actually apt install or apt get install. I'm old. I like to apt get because I've been using it for so long, but they both work in case you've seen different instructions. I want to make sure HTOP is on here. I just like to watch the processors. You'll see that later. Completely optional. You could just patiently wait and wonder what it's doing. So back over to this. We're going to want to clone or download. So copy that. And we'll apt install git. Say yes. It's going to install git. 
pretty simple. Git clone, paste in the link. So git clone, this right here, here we go. Pretty straightforward and simple. Send orchestra updater. I do have Vim installed as well. If you're more partial to Nano, if that's what you're more comfortable with and do that, I just really recommend learning Vim because that's how we're gonna edit the config file. But how do we get to that config file? So what do we do here? Let's run back through the instructions. We loaded Git, we Git cloned the project and it'll always pull when you do that, it's gonna pull whatever the latest version is. And this was updated three days ago, but whenever you're pulling this is how it pulls the latest version. They have all the install instructions, basic functionality for XO install, XO install update, rollback. Their script is pretty straightforward. They do have the system requirements listed for Debian right here. The good news is the script is very automated and will run through and install all these for you. So you actually, you could install these ahead of time, save that layer, but it, they've done a nice job with the builder and it goes and grabs all the pre, uh, necessary packages and puts them in there. So once we're in here though, the one thing we do have to edit is the config. So we're gonna do CP sample config and uh, we wanna just rename that sample config to or make a copy of it. You could just rename it and use it, however works for you, but xo install.config. We're going to edit that in a second. Before, as I know, one of the things people are going to ask about is I want to have SSL on there. So we're going to go CD, Etsy, SSL, make dir, xo, call it whatever you want. You could follow your own practices, but for the guide here, this is how we're going to do it. And I will be pasting these instructions, like I said, into the and the sample config file will be available on my forums. So all I did was open SSL, request, new key, RSA 496, X509, uh, 3,650 days till expire, nodes out X, XOCRT, key out XRCRT. And if you missed any of that, check the forums. Give it a two letter country name. We're in Michigan for the state name. Let's see, M-I-C-H-I-G-A-N, almost misspelled my state. Well, U T H E T. These are completely optional. You could actually do whatever you want. This is the YouTube division of Lawrence Systems that's doing this. Uh, common name X O. Uh, email uh, X at X dot. Um, why not? All right. If we do an L S, we see there's two files here. If you're going to do something else, certificates, uh, or set up something more advanced, like let's encrypt certs, that's beyond the scope of this particular talk, but you can point it at the key files that it will use inside of XO. And that's what we're going to do next. So let's go back over to here. And now we're ready to start editing the file. So then XO install config port. We're going to change this to port eight. 443. Three. Whoops. Can't type. There we go. True. Plugins all. You just got to do is comment that out or get rid of the commenting that out and just plugins all. That's perfectly fine. Path to exocert key. The two files you created. Really straightforward on how to do that. That was it. Now we're going to head and right quit. I don't think there's anything else I need to change in here. Unless there's something custom. Some people said, well, can I put it on an even different port than that? Sure you can. You can put it on whatever port you want. From there, we just run the XO install. But before that, I'm going to hit Tmux. That way I can split the screen. All right, we'll go. XO install. Auto install. Install without packages. Deploy a Docker container. Roll back to another installation. I'm not going to cover the Docker one, but it works. The Docker one's even easier because it's just going to go grab the latest Docker image and kick it off on your system. So that is another option if you want. It is verifying that it recognizes that the OS is Debian 10. The base dir is optxo root uh, port 443. We're pulling from the master branch. The plugins to be installed. I just chose all. I mean, you could selectively install them if you want, but all seems good. If you're going to get them, get all of them. And uh, then we just click the one for auto install. Running update. We're just going to go down here and we're going to pull up HTOP. And you can just kind of watch it run through and we'll see how much processor it's using. It's installing Yarn. It's going to install Node. It's going to run through any of uh, the extras it needs or things that are missing in here. So we'll let it do this. Now it's going to grab all the source code. So it's finished with all the build dependencies and all the packages it needs to build this. Now it's going to run the installation. Now this is an important part. Exo server and Exo web build 
uh, can take quite a while, grab a cup of coffee and lay back. So I got my coffee ready right here. And uh, now you're going to watch uh, down here the processor jump all over the place doing its thing while it gets through each part of this until it's done. So we're just going to fast forward through this part as well. All right, it's finalizing. A couple little housekeeping things it does, making sure it runs on startup. Starting with system D, waiting for port to open. You'll see all the services starting down here. Now they're all started. And that's it, it's ready to go. So now we can navigate over to the IP address of this machine and log in. New certificate, so accept that. Admin at admin.net. Admin, this is the default password. Please change this, don't leave your system at that. And remember too, once you add another user, that doesn't get rid of that user. Uh, then from here, we can just go add a server, label a uh, lab test. I already have a XCPNG, XCPNG server set up. 3.210 root. Allow unauthorized certificates. And I think I got the password right. We'll know in a second. There we go, XCPNG lab. VMs, let me see what VMs are on this. Uh, Cool. We can start Debian Lab or whatever. We now have a completely installed working uh, XO built from source and orchestra. It says this version is not bundled with any support nor updates. Like I said, this is great for if you want to uh, run this in your lab and learn all about it. It is the full feature. Here's go over to the settings, plugins. There's all the plugins that loaded. So all those features are there. Turns out, well, how many there? Wow, 17 plugins that got loaded. And if you want it even to work, you can obviously turn them on and off here um, and, uh, well, adjust the settings as needed, of course. So let's go and see, like this one, plugin not configured. Some of them need to be configured before they can uh, be turned on. But that's how you turn them on and off and start enabling features. But that's it. You've now built the latest version, and the latest version as of the recording of this video pulled from the master branch is XO 5.5. 8.2 and web 5.58.2. So hopefully this is helpful. Like I said, I'll be leaving links to the step-by-step -step instructions as well inside of my forums. There'll be a link in the below on, on this video. And thanks. And thank you for making it to the end of the video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more content from the channel, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon if you like YouTube to notify you when new videos come out. If you'd like to hire us, head over to lawrencesystems.com, fill out our contact page, and let us know what we can help you with and what projects you'd like us to work together on. If you want to carry on the discussion, head over to forums.lawrencesystems.com where we can carry on the discussion about this video, other videos, or other tech topics in general, even suggestions for new videos. They're accepted right there on our forums, which are free. Also, if you'd like to help the channel out in other ways, head over to our affiliate page. We have a lot of great tech offers for you. And once again, thanks for watching and see you next time.